So I wanted to review some Prismacolor uh, color pencils. I'm not necessarily interested in doing like full color drawing with them, um, though they'll work fine for that. What I've been interested in is using them as like little drawing combinations and exploring some of the darker ones, um, especially as when you can use them against the lighter ones. We'll ignore white and black um, for now. Uh, they're definitely worth using, but I'll use them on a different video. Um, first off, let's just go through what some of the things look like. So this is a PC947. This is dark umber. So it's going to be a brown. Gets pretty very dark and has a nice little soft tone to it. The nice thing about Prismacolors gen generally is that the um, is that they are soft, meaning that you don't have to push hard. And I f and you know when I, I draw a lot and I draw a um, a bunch of demos and when you draw a lot you don't want to work for the dark values you just want them to come easily and that's what I like about Prismacolors is you don't have to work for it very hard and I haven't used these uh, like a whole lot because I've been um, just using standard traditional drawing materials So here, this is 931, this is dark purple. Again, gets pretty dark, a pretty cool uh, type of violet. Um, this one's 996. This is black grape, and I think these um, black grape, black raspberry, black cherries, I think they're relatively new uh, ones. This one's really, really nice, because it's it feels like a blue violet, but it's like almost black. It's really dark and it's just something different if you're if you use black all the time just to kind of vary it. This one's uh, black cherry which is 1078. It's pretty neutral. Um, way more neutral than the dark violet. A little bit on the reddish side. Uh, this one's black raspberry, which is 10.95. This one kind of has a brown tendency, closer to the umber, but a little more saturated. Um, also pretty nice. Let's see. There's a whole cult surrounding indigo blue, um, and this one's definitely awesome because it does get dark. It's a cool color, um, you know, really fun to use. When it when you get dark with it, it just really sinks back. It's awesome. It feels and the overall feel of Prismacolor is just nice because it's it's very like buttery, I guess. Real smooth. This one's nine oh eight. This is dark green. Again, this one also gets really pretty dark. Um, it's a nice green. It's a cool green, not necessarily a warm green. And then I've got these three kind of lighter green or lighter um, values that I like to use in combination. This is 912. This is uh, apple green and it's a real light green. Doesn't get particularly dark. This one is uh, yellowed orange with 1002. Again, this one actually gets shockingly dark for a yellow, which I kind of like. Um, it is pretty saturated, but I don't usually use it um, like in that manner. Uh, this is a 10% cool gray, 1059. I'm going to write that in, in black so you can actually see it. So cool gray. Definitely not, not saturated. It's not going to do much on the page. You can probably barely see it on the video, 
But the kicker is when you combine these, these things. So let's say you take indigo blue and coal gray. You can do a sketch of an object that you're drawing, right? Say you're drawing a cylinder or something. Sketch it out, you know, and then you can go back on your second layer and correct any mistakes you've made with the indigo. And you can use this cool gray with all kinds of combos. And it's going to work nice. And you can draw it, you can even draw like pretty dark with the cool gray. It still doesn't show up very much. And then come back with your choice of anything to go on top. And it's going to look pretty good. And that cool gray is just going to kind of disappear, which is what you want it to do, right? So I've been using material materials, one material to search and one material to actually like, you know, finish off the object and find it. So um, you got a couple of good options here. I always like to use um, complementary colors. So with uh, a Tuscan red, the 937, and this light green, the apple green, you can come up with a pretty interesting combo. So if you're drawing like a box or something, you can lay out the box and then come back in with the red, finish it out. That green disappears, it neutralizes the red a little bit. and give you just another tool that you can use. You know, especially if you're beginning to draw, I always like to recommend using a searching tool if you're having trouble drawing soft enough. You know, ideally if you drew, if you, when you draw a box, you take your, your pencil and you draw, you know, you draw pretty lightly, you draw like this, right? And you do your searching all in one, in one kind of tone real lightly. And then you would come back with the same one and heighten it to find your object, right? But if you're having trouble, like if you're going, if you're drawing a box and you're just kind of doing this real dark, that's why I recommend using a second color. Um, and I chose this yellow orange because it's, it's versatile because you can layer on top of it. Um, so you could use uh, this this yellow and the green good uh, good combination because it's just going to kind of warm up the green a little bit but not really change the effect that you're going for overall you can choose yellow and the uh, dark violet which is another um, or dark purple, which is another complementary color scheme. So you could be drawing like a cone or something. Try to find the cone and then come back through with the violet. And there's something really satisfying about using um, complementary colors for this too. And if you do a fully rendered drawing, and you're just exploring, and you're just exploring color. I recommend using complementary colors first because um, it neutralizes everything when you start to mix them. It does good stuff. It creates kind of like a third color in there that you can't really necessarily predict, but you can make good use of as you layer it up real softly. So that color is very distinct and different from anything that either one on its own can do. So um, highly recommend Prismacolor stuff. Um, I haven't had problems with them breaking or anything, um, and I quite like them. This is the palette that I've been using. Again, uh, try things out for yourself and see what you like. Um, and what's nice about these Prismacolors is they come in a bunch of different sets. You can get them individually. You can sometimes get them in 12 packs of one color if you have a favorite. And, uh, and again, you've got your Umber, your Tuscan Red, your Dark Violet, your, um, what is it, Black? Black Grape, Black Raspberry, Black Cherry, one or the other. I can't remember. you got your Indigo, your Dark Green, your Apple Green. 
your uh, yellow, orange, and your 10% cool gray.